Most of you know Wanda's book, The Great American Thing, a fine book and a long line of fine books. I like this title so much that when I'm talking with students or friends, I like to call Wanda a great American thing. Consider what she accomplished during a single decade between the early 70s and the early 80s. That was a period in which there was not a great deal of respect for American art, uh, the American art that predated abstract expressionism anyway. She uh, did a great deal for that vibrant vein of core American consciousness that runs from American Gothic to Christina's world. And that was only part of what she did. Her exhibitions and publications during her first decade in the field probably did more for the understanding and appreciation of pre-abstract American art of the modern era, the narrative art of people and things, than any other curator of the time. I will be talking about only her first three exhibitions, Tonalism, Wyeth, and Rockefeller. Wanda and I go back 50 years. We were introduced by a mutual friend in 1963 as we were preparing to start our graduate work in New York. Uh, she at NYU and I at Columbia. We did not start to spend quality time together until we found ourselves both living in the San Francisco Bay Area in the early 70s. As the chief curator of San Francisco's two old master museums, I was continuing the academic work I had done at the Museum of Modern Art in New York by offering museum studies internships uh, for graduate students. Wanda's first internship with me was 1971-72. She wanted her MA thesis to be an exhibition and publication. The topic she proposed was tonalism. I did not have any idea what she was talking about. But as she continued to talk, I realized this would be a good project and said, go ahead. I expected her to produce a very small exhibition. However, she astonished me by creating a jewel of an exhibition and a jewel of a publication. When I realized what an extremely creative person I was working with, I became more involved and more excited. Because the key concept involved color, I suggested she did not need to stay inside the old museum tradition of the white box for her installation. She could use color liberally in the installation and in the catalog if she wanted to. It could have been a mess, of course, but it turned out to be a pair of masterpieces, both called The Color of Mood, American Tonalism, 1880-1910. With a tiny amount of money, she made the galleries glow, and she made her pages glow. The environments extended from the art itself in the galleries and returned back to enrich the experience of each work of art. The walls were saturated with color. Um, here are uh, some examples. Um, just a brief taste of, of this beautiful little show. Some balls were green, some balls were blue. <clears throat> and uh, she also, notice, hung photographs beside paintings. That was radical. The pages of the catalog also were toned. Even the type was green. So um, it was a, a comprehensive color experience. And we were able to sell the catalog for a few dollars as part of a new program of affordable publications. Now it'll cost you 50 or 100 or $200. Why? Because not only is it a beautiful publication, but because in her elegant essay, wanted to define an entire era for the first time. She also pioneered in this show and those that followed democratic forms of public education that went against the elitist tradition of art museums at the time. She wrote explanatory wall labels and created small contextual galleries. Standard practice now, but pioneering then. <clears throat> Let's go on to the Wyeth show. Wanda's second uh, internship with me was Andrew Wyeth a year later. 
When she proposed this topic, I thought she was taking on a great deal, but I and the director, Ian White, felt she could do it. So we gave her a big budget and a free hand. Wyeth was thought of as a major illustrator, like his father, but not accepted as a major artist until Wanda came along and changed the paradigm. She accomplished that alchemical act with a 1973 exhibition and publication called The Art of Andrew Wyeth. And you're looking at uh, one of the installation shots. Her goal was not simply to present a nice exhibition, but rather to reposition Wyeth in the art world. That was quite a challenge. The general public loved his work, of course. At the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the best-selling postcard has long been not Pollock, not Picasso, but Wyeth Christina's world. Nevertheless, within an art establishment in love with various forms of abstract art, art that tells stories was not widely admired. Indeed, often not even considered art. The dogma of formalist critics, for whom form was everything, dominated perceptions in most of the art world. Let's look at Wanda and how she did it. The show was wonderful, very well selected, but it would take a book to change minds. She started with a reverence for narrative. She can read a painting with as much focused feeling as a literary critic reads a novel. She loved how Wyeth can tell a story and how much art is in the manner of the telling. But she had to help others see that. How? And she had less than a year to do the book. She said to herself that a single voice in a book probably would seem too shrill. So she conceived a book that was a masterstroke. She invited a set of distinguished art writers to contribute existing essays and then wrote one herself. In a word, she brought the establishment onto her team. In addition to her essay were essays by E.P. Richardson, the very dean of American art history, Brian O'Doherty, a highly respected critic, and Richard Merriman, who knew Wyeth from the inside out. Wanda first positioned Wyeth within regionalism and later defined his, quote, metaphoric realism, unquote, as a dynamic, quote, synthesis of American regionalism with American surrealism, unquote. Uh, a synthesis that, as you all know, is infused with emotionality. Until this book appeared, the critical literature on Wyeth was quite slim. Why uh, Wanda's combining of the four insightful essays constituted, as uh, we still read on uh, the website uh, at Amazon.com, quote, the uh, first book to explore the depth, richness, and diversity of Andrew Wyeth's art, unquote. Many serious Wyeth books followed, but Wanda's was the first. Let's reflect on the academic context of her achievement. American art was not an accepted field for a PhD at NYU until Wanda came along and again changed the paradigm. Doing the Wyeth show and book opened a gate for the rivers of, <clears throat> of American art research to flow. American art became legitimate at a major university. Other universities would follow. The sociology of what she has done is worth a special study. Among other things, she pioneered the use of visitor surveys in the form of exit polls.